Hey guys, sorry it's been a while since I did a uh, the next um, part of the sewer series, but that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take you through the rest of the uh, creation process in Dungeon Draft, and then we're going to get all the way to exporting all of these uh, different pieces. We're going to uh, make the different layers for the tops of the pipes. These are all going to be turned into overhead tiles, and we're going to uh, basically get everything ready for uh, putting into Foundry. Uh, we're also going to add some modular rooms. I'll show you how to add dynamic pieces like a room where we're gonna create them as separate tiles and do some creative things with green screening to be able to export them. But, uh, and I won't walk you through everything. We're running about twice the speed here. And, you know, I've walked you through in the previous episodes, you know, the general, uh, approach that we've got to some of these design elements. So we're just going to repeat those. Now that we've got them established, we're going to repeat some of those design elements and uh, basically make you know the rest of the map using what we've already decided on. So here we're going to work on this big room. This is the big boss room. Uh, we'll have a, you know, not a lot of room for battle for an encounter. You can see if these are all, you know, five foot squares, there's a lot of room in here to to do some fun things. And we're just going to use some of the same patterns we used before. We're going to use some of the same hex codes for this wall, for example. And I'm splitting that wall up. It's a path. I'm splitting it up into pieces so that, you know, we can delete uh, some of these. Excuse me, I don't think it's a path, actually. I think this wall is a wall. And like I said before, we could leave this as a big giant empty space, but we want to try to make it more interesting than that. So we're using elevation or the illusion of elevation to, to make the space more tactically interesting and to break up a bunch of the monotony. Going to use some of the same water hex codes and which also includes trans semi transparency of the water that we've used in the past. And I want to sort of use the wall itself as a guide to make it look like this water channel is, is going down. So, you know, using a little bit of a trick of perspective to try to create that. And we're just trying to get this approximate. We can edit points when we're done. I'm going to turn off snap to grid for most of that. Then we'll just fast forward through a lot of this. You saw me use some of these same techniques in a smaller room. We're doing the same thing, just at a larger scale here with this room. And I've decided I want this particular channel to be dry. When I finally put it into Foundry, I may uh, decide to make something that floods that room. So I may uh, create something later that lets that channel get flooded. But for right now, I think the one on the left will be where the main water comes from and the one on the top will be. Now I'm gonna use some of the Forgotten Adventures paths for water. Now, I did this video quite some time ago and there are actually now quite a few more options from Forgotten Adventures for water paths. So I suggest if you don't have the most recent, check it out. Um, there's a ton of better stuff available now, including like waterfalls and other things that I've used in the past here and, and used in this video that I would I would use some of the, the more upgraded assets now. And we're just fast forwarding again, just adding some of these little waterfalls, trying to make them sort of agree with the curvature of everything else we're seeing here. And we'll just add some more water paths. 
you know, it's starting to feel like there's some real, you know, movement in this water. As the water flows out, we're going to want to try to figure out what direction is it going to try to go in. So, you know, it may, if it finds a way to go down another channel, it may do that. I've got it shrinking and growing on both ends of that path, if you didn't notice. And again, more just trying to break up this large area and figured there might be some sort of drain. Maybe that drain is an egress point for the big bad, uh, either going in or leaving this, this area. And I'm going to use my shadow path trick again, just to, again, make sure that uh, this looks like it's got some change in depth. I have snapped a grid on. I'm, I'm trying to use the grid to make sure I draw a perfect circle here. And I've decided I want it really dark towards that drain, so I'm just going to double up my path. We'll throw a wibbly wobbly line along the edge there just to finish it. And that looks pretty, pretty murky and pretty interesting to me. And I just need something underneath the drain that makes it look like it's going down into a darker area. And since I like this channel effect so much, I'm going to draw it now under the water, which I think is effective. It makes it look like that masonry really continues to go down further. And take snap to grid off just because I want to get it in the right spot, and it's not necessarily lined up with the grid here at this point. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm feeling pretty happy about the rooms that I've created, the flow of those rooms. I'm going to add some shadows now underneath areas where I want to create some separation between, you know, pipes and the floors, for example. And I won't show you everything that I'm going to do here, but I'm just going to go through and touch up a bunch of different areas, work on little seams and transitions. I'm going to, you know, address this little room over here. I want to make something that might be a room that gets flooded. And so I'll, I'll create some, some elements here that you know, might let my my players you know uh, unstick a, a you know a rusty wheel and you know either close off or open up uh, a water source again any pipes that are in the wall i'll embed i won't put shadows under them it's only when they emerge into the rooms that they'll get separated. Now I actually created a custom door here. I used a bunch of components just from Forgotten Adventures uh, pipes set. And I'll, I'll uh, explode these out here in a second show you, but I made a prefab out of it because I wanted to make these custom doors that were really heavy doors that players could come and sort of unlock access to these, these tanks, these tanks that might fill up with water if they, you know, make a, make a mistake as they're going through this. And I wanted to create some access points to those doors. So you've got two pipes, well, one pipe leading in, one pipe leading out, and then an access um, hallway, uh, sort of a maintenance hallway to get to them. But creating custom things like this, I do it all the time. I kit bash doors and other things that I think, you know, if it doesn't exist already in the Forgotten Adventures library, you know, they have so many things that can be used as raw materials to create other things that I don't hesitate to try to do that. Now, since this video, Dungeon Drafts paths have gotten much more forgiving to go around corners. So while I'm using the corner objects, shadow objects here a lot in this 
video, I don't typically do that these days because you can really round corners without creating that, that hedgehog effect. Sometimes I'll still use the, the corner objects, but a lot of what I've done here, uh, I could get, uh, I could do with, with just uh, single paths these days. Here, I'm just exploding out that, that prefab that I showed you before. So now I can use that door whenever I want to. That's just the components of it. I'm just evaluating the map, looking for opportunities to clean up at this level because pretty soon we're going to start to create uh, more of the interactive elements here. One thing I realized is that this is really flat. Like if you look at the elevation throughout the map, it's sort of one level. And uh, so what we want to do is we want to change that up a little bit. It's nice to have staircases and changes in elevation. It can create intrigue for players as they're they're going through. It gives you an opportunity to uh, you know mention that there's a staircase going down and who knows what's at the end of it. So I'm just looking for places where I can tactically uh, put some of these overlay tiles. So these are just stair overlays also with Forgotten Adventures. And you can see that it really does just create a more interesting sort of um, map if you have these little subtle elevation changes here and there. And I also realized that these give me an opportunity to uh, sort of bury my drains in the floor. These drains should be at the, the lower point of the floor. So you can see I'm just using these stair pieces to create those changes in elevation. And I think it works well in general, so I'll, I'll put it in some other places too. Anywhere where I've got a drain that I want to sort of embed in the floor, and you can see it works pretty well. Okay. It's kind of taking another look. Do I feel like I can make an adventure out of this? Do I see how my players are going to move through it? And I decided I want to finish one of these rooms or I want to put something in it. In this case, I'm going to make a little machine room. And I just wanted to show you how I'm just using stair pieces to kit bash a bunch of custom you know, components to this room here. I'm using a, a metal door to create, basically create what looks like cabinets. And I'm putting these upper cabinets at a at higher elevation, 300. It's higher than the cabinets below them or the countertop below them. They get kind of slightly open, right? Again, just kind of breaking up anything that might look like monotony. And I'm just grabbing a bunch of components and throwing them on this workbench. Right, pretty simple. And I might some have some broken pipe pieces here. I've got a couple of levers. some maintenance crew might use this room. I'll add a little bit of shadow under all these little components just to make them look like they're sitting up on their own. And I'm just really painting in shadows underneath these things just to, to really create the illusion of depth. It's real simple. I'll leave everything else for the most part untouched. I'm going to put some custom rooms in here. Okay, now you haven't seen it, but I'm actually at another level. I've created a new level called Pipes. And I've created it so that I can see through to the next level. So I'm comparing levels. I'm using the compare, compare tool you can see in the bottom right there. And uh, and then I, I'm as I'm looking at where these pipes are going to go, I'm just using the top version of all the bottom versions. So Forgotten Adventures was kind enough to make a top and a bottom version of each pipe. I am just laying those in on top of uh, wherever I saw their counterparts. And then I'm, I'm making corrections with the bottom 
as well, just to make sure that they both agree the top and bottom. But essentially I'm creating a roof here. These will be overhead tiles when I finally bring it into Foundry. All of these pipes will go away because they're sitting on their own level. So as a player walks into a pipe, the top will disappear and then the bottom will stay there. And now I've got another, a new level yet. This is called rooms. And, and while I'm looking through to the, the ground level, it, th these rooms are sitting on their own. And I'm using this green because I, I want to be able to cut these out and then eliminate everything outside of uh, the walls here. So so you see ultimately when I export this, you'll see me uh, use these uh, this green to basically eliminate anything outside of these these rooms. I'm not sure that I needed to do this, but we'll see how this goes when I bring it into Clip Studio after this. I use Clip Studio, you can use GIMP or, or Photoshop or, or whatever you'd like. We're going to do some basically some a very simple post processing here to get these rooms on their own. Again, I want these rooms to be their own tiles because I want to be able to drop them in uh, or take them out. Or I may want to customize one of these rooms and make it a, you know, a thieves den or something like that. And I'm kind of fast forwarding through a lot of this stuff. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what do I want these rooms to be? Like, how do I want them to interact with the, the main map? And do I need to create any transitions or anything like that? Again, these rooms are on their own level here. In this room, I, I think I really want it to have a secret entrance, so I'm just kind of considering how I want the wall to transition or to, to sort of merge uh, with the wall of the main room. Again, with the latest dungeon draft, I could probably get by with just rounding these corners with the same path instead of using the objects. So you can see I'm back down to the ground floor. I've got the pipes floor. These will all be cut out, uh, export and then cut out. Now we're going to export everything. I'm going to do it at 100 pixels. Such a big map, I didn't want to do 150. So I'm ground, exporting the entire ground floor at 100 pixels. And rather than use the crop tool to get all of the pipes and everything else pulled out, I'm just going to export everything as you know at the same dimensions. Uh, because I, I think I want to... Um, I think I want to use Clip Studio to, to do my final cropping. You can see the, um, the rooms that, that are sitting on their own level. And what we're going to do in the next one is we're going to bring these into Clip Studio, and I'll show you guys how we put it into Foundry.